<laughs> okay, this is super weird because I can't see you guys, but hello YouTube, I'm Curtis Bowdy and this is the scope of science. And I just built, I built a digital camera. Okay, wait a second, we're gonna start from the very beginning. You see, this isn't really a video about the camera that I built, but it's about how I built it. People often ask how the eye, in all its complexity, could have possibly evolved. And I actually think it's a great example of evolution. Now, since the eye is actually a lot like a camera, well, the camera's a lot like an eye, I've decided to evolve a digital camera one step at a time so that at each step, it still worked. So this is that process. I start by making something that can sense light. It's a photo cell and I'm going to make mine using a copper penny. You see, metals like copper give off electrons when they're exposed to light. And by adding some heat and some salt water to a plate of copper, I can actually make that effect big enough that I can measure it. Animals also see light by using chemistry and electrical charges. Just instead of copper, it's proteins, and instead of wires, it's neurons. Now I can take the number value that I get and represent it as a degree of brightness. A lower number is darker, and a higher number is brighter. Now to make a camera, I'm gonna need a lot of these. But since I don't have 2.8 billion years to evolve the camera, and that's how long it took for life to evolve vision, I'm just going to take a couple shortcuts and I'm going to order a bunch off of Amazon. This photo cell is more compact than my penny, but if I connect it to my Arduino brain computer thing, I can use it in pretty much the same way. If I put a bunch of these photo cells together, I get a sensor, and now I can measure light even better. And now I can finally start to tell if maybe there's a predator swimming above me and it's casting a shadow onto me. That's really important information to have. This is what life might look like for a hydra. They can see light and dark, but that's about it. Now I'm going to build a wall up around my sensor so that light entering one side casts a shadow on some of my photo cells. If light enters from the left side of my sensor, it casts light on the right side. If it enters from the top, it casts light on the bottom. I can now use my camera to sense directionality. It can see if light is coming from over there or if there is a predator coming at me from behind. This is what life might look like for flatworms. Their eyes are just little sensors in a cup. The bigger this wall gets, the smaller the hole becomes, and the more directionality I can see. Eventually, I can close that hole almost all the way until it's just a pinhole. We call that a pinhole camera. And it's not very sensitive, so I need to use a lot of really bright lights so that it can receive an image. And since I'm using so many bright lights, I have to wear these glasses to protect my eyes because it's blinding otherwise, so I can't really see you guys. But I built this digital camera using 16 photo cells and a pinhole box, and the image you see from it is currently in black and white, and it's just 16 pixels, so it's pretty extremely low resolution, but hopefully you can make out my selfie. Hi! And... The image you see from it is upside down and backwards because of how light goes through this hole in the front of this camera. The image is upside down and backwards because remember, if light enters from the left side, it shows up on the right, and if it enters from the top, it shows up on the bottom. I can use computer software to rotate and flip that image. In life, that software is stored in brains. It'd be good if we had a color image, and we can do that with a little grade school math and physics. All of the light we see is made of just three primary colors, red, green, and blue. Mix them together and you get purple, or well, I mean, you get the idea. If we specialize our photo cells so that each one only detects one color, say we cover it with a red filter so that only red light gets onto that one, we can see how much red is in the image, or how much blue is in the image, or how much green too. The thing is that each photo cell needs a value for each color. 
Purple is lots of red, lots of blue, but no green. But we can use the power of averages for this. This photocell senses red and it uses its neighbor to figure out how much green and blue is nearby. Computing that, we get purple. Our eyes actually work like this. They have three photocells called rods. One's for red, one's for green, and one is for blue. Now my camera, it can see color. So let's take a look out my window. It's a little pixelated, but I mean, okay, it's, it's, really, it's really pixelated. <laughs> After spending a lot of hours trying to upgrade my camera from 16 pixels to 81 pixels, after all that, finally, I gave up when I realized that this was the best possible image I could get from an 81 pixel camera in the best case scenario. And yes, it's cool, but it's just not good enough because I want to show you how lenses work and I can't do that with this level of resolution. So I just upgraded from 16 pixels to over 2 million pixels using one of the camera bodies that I already owned. And this is the image you get with that. And it's blurry because I still haven't added a lens to it. This is still just a pinhole camera. It's a piece of cardboard with a pinhole in it. So the light goes directly onto the sensor. This is the world through the pinhole eyes of the Nautilus. It's dark and blurry, but there are images and color. For the next step, we're going to add a very simple lens. Behold, the water droplet. Yes, just a single droplet of water can act as a magnifying glass. And this is something that you can try at your own risk on your smartphone. It will act as a macro lens, making very tiny things very large to your sensor so that you can zoom into tiny little things like the Canadian flag on the sleeve of the astronaut on the $5 Canadian bill. Lots of snails have simple lens eyes like this. Now that lens is still pretty crude, so we're gonna bring it up to the next level. <laughs> this crazy looking image that's kind of blown out on the sides is what you get if you just use a magnifying glass in front of the pinhole. It's better than nothing, but it's still kind of distorted on the outside. But hopefully this gives you an idea of the focus that a piece of glass or a droplet of water can give you in making an image. I finally look like a real person. Okay, a weird person, but I, that's how I normally am. Now there are more tweaks you could do in evolving a camera like being able to change the size of the pinhole or change the distance between the pinhole and the lens. All of those things can change and improve the image that you get but I think by now you should get the idea of how a camera works and how a camera or an eye could evolve. Something really cool happened while I was working on this project but before I get into that if you feel like you've learned something so far, please consider subscribing to this channel. You'll see the button for it below. If bad puns don't make you subscribe, what will? Okay. Okay, so while this project evolved, the code that I was writing got messier and messier because I kept adding new code, but since it usually wasn't worth my time to delete the old code that I was no longer using, it kind of just became clutter and just built up. Now, what's awesome about that is that that's what actually happens in evolution. Most of our DNA doesn't actually do anything anymore. It used to, but it no longer has a function and it just kind of stuck around. Scientists call it junk DNA and it makes up most of our DNA. <laughs> Evolution doesn't solve things in the best possible way. It just solves things using whatever way is good enough. That's why our eyes have a blind spot. You see, the photocells in our eyes are actually pointing the wrong way. They're pointing away from light. So there's actually a bundle of nerves where there should be photocells. <laughs> If you want to find your blind spot, I left instructions and a link in the description. If you like this video, you can like this video. And if you want to learn more about how evolution works, I recommend the book The Selfish Gene by Richard Dawkins. It's actually the reason that I started to take science classes in the first place. The 40th anniversary of the book just came out and I can tell you it stands the test of time. It is a true classic. You can buy that book using the link in the description and that link will also help support this channel, The Scope of Science. I also put some links to the camera gear that I use to film the camera that I made. It was meta, right? Anyways, thanks so much for watching.